For all things great iron and hard top, it's Kevlu and Steve since the sandbox. What's up everybody? Since the sandbox is back, post pop-up event, post week one fantasy yes, rankings. Sir. Now we're giving you guys the breakdown on all of the NFL games coming up for week one. Oh my god. Thank <laughs> God football's here. back. It's here, week one Ooh. is finally back. Guys, Kev's gonna take a big fantasy L on Sunday. Huge L. But am I playing any of you guys? Nah. Like, you're lucky you're not playing any of them. Three out of four <laughs> leagues, number one ranked teams. Remember that. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're going to break down the games going on week one. And, Lou, let's start this off with the Colts. We could talk about the game as a whole, but we do know that Seattle, um, it, it, in the betting standards, we want to talk about spreads and locks. Seattle minus three here. Uh, what do you think about the game? What do you think about the spread? I think it's dead on. Yeah. Dead on balls accurate. I, I, I think it's going to be a close game. It's going to come down to whoever can make the big defensive stops and, yeah. and, and keep the other opposing quarterback on the side of the field, whoever runs it better and can complete those third down plays and, and really get it done. I think the spread's perfect. I think Seattle minus three is just what it should be. Yes, yeah, sir. Kev, what about Jacksonville and Houston? I know that's a game that you were talking about a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> absolute lock. Absolute lock. Jacksonville minus three, absolute lock. They could... They, they could kick f two field goals and win by the spread because the Texans won't score. They're awful. Absolute lock. If you're going to bet any game this week, bet Jacksonville to win by at least four. And I'm going to actually talk about a surprise lock for me. So I've talked about how anti-Philly I am, mm -hmm. especially being a Giants fan. But I actually think Philly minus four is a lock. I no, know that no. them going on the road – that's a really tough game. It's a tough scenario. I like it. But I think they're underdogs. Like they, they got nothing like they got nothing to lose. Neither does Atlanta, but they haven't they've had nothing to lose for three years. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> like realistically. Um I really think I really think the Eagles are gonna come out and I think that they're, they're gonna win this game and I think Jalen Hurts has something to play for. I think Devonta Smith could have a great game and Lou, I know you're a big Miles Sanders guy. Um I'm not big on, on the Eagles defense. I don't think they have one. But I think their offense could be pretty pretty good. They get a D-tackle. Yeah. <laughs> so going to the next game, we got the, the L.A. Chargers traveling to Washington. What do you guys think about that one? I think that's – I think I, not that they know something we don't, but I feel like if you look at it, Chargers the more talented team on offense, have the way better QB, new head coach. Probably a better roster. Probably, yes, definitely I would say a better roster. And then Washington has the defense – in like the pedigree from last season, they yeah. did what they had to do. So, I feel like they're more of a team. Yes, you know yes. What I mean, so one point is close. That's that's without them being the Washington Football Team. Yeah, <laughs> but lay skins, <laughs> right? Um, next game, Kev, Pittsburgh versus Buffalo. What are you mm. thinking here? What What are you expecting for you and your Bills Mafia on Sunday? Tell all your Patriot fans. So it's a, it's six six and a half point spread, obviously. Obviously, the Bills are favored. It obviously, <laughs> um, but I mean, I, I I would take the Bills honestly. I mean, would you? Yeah, I would. <laughs> I really would. I mean, Bills Mafia Week One, Josh Allen's pff, the best quarterback in football. So that's all they need to hear, right? That's all they need to hear. I mean, what, what do you want me to say? You guys know how I feel <laughs> yeah. about the Bills. What am I going to sit here and say the Bills are going to lose so, by a touchdown Week One? It, Not going to happen. They they might. They might sneak. They might sneak by the spread, winning by a touchdown. But I think it'll be you know a ten plus game. But that's yeah. just me. All right. Yeah, I do have a lock though. All right, a, a lock. I have a lock. Too. So everyone's been lock. gassing this team, and I think it's a little overhyped. Okay. But I think they're playing a team that isn't that good, and home field advantage is extremely misleading so okay. far in the in the first week. I don't think I like that. It. I like Minnesota minus three versus Cincinnati. Okay. Give it to me all day, dude. They're better at every single position, pretty much. Almost. I mean, the quarterbacks are close, but Joe Burrow hasn't looked great on his bum leg. Mm -hmm. That O line isn't good. And the Vikings have supposedly gotten better. So we're seeing a team that could contend for a division versus the worst team in another division. So I don't think Cincinnati's home field advantage means Ugat means nothing. Ugats. Nothing. <laughs> Zero diddly. Pi minus 3.14, one, whatever the Shout numbers are. Like, wow, <laughs> Mr. Degandon. But no, seriously, that's a lock. I don't even know why it's this close. I really think it's the home field advantage. I There's another oh, one, man. too, with Baltimore and 
and then the Raiders. It's like a five, four point spread. Like, yeah, how is that yeah. even possible? So those are your locks, Lou, right there. And I got one more. That's it, right? I got one more. We're gonna go with. Don't take mine. No, we're gonna go with the Giants plus three. Oh, okay. Uh, Denver I love blows. That. Teddy like Bridgewater is gonna have about. When I, I'm gonna make the prediction, and I'm gonna be right. Passes 20 yards or more in the air. Teddy Bridgewater <laughs> will have under. He'll have under two that game. <laughs> Legit zero. I gotta. I gotta lock. <laughs> okay, right. it's lock. And it's. Yeah, it's. Well, yeah, it's tied for the biggest spread of the week. Ooh. 49 is minus seven and a half. I like yeah, that. Absolute lock. Okay. Absolute lock. They win by 14 plus without a doubt. Okay. Without a, without we a goddamn doubt. We just received a phone call that is now indeed no more lock. <laughs> Vegas, Absolute lock. This is now mush. <laughs> yeah. Lock, Vegas, throw away the key. Vegas. I don't care who's quarterback and if it's Jimmy G, if it's Lance, if it's <laughs> Nick you, you know, if it's Nick McHugh, I don't care who it is. Shout out Nick McHugh. Yeah, shout but out. But they Nick could throw McHugh anyone back the there, Soviet. and you know, it's just it's not looking good for Detroit. Oh, the news, the news spread is Detroit minus three. All right, Ted, give the rest, of, give the rest of your locks. Well, Lou took all my other locks. That was my biggest lock. But I mean, I'm screwed too. Don't even take either of those. All out. right, all right. So I, I got two more locks that neither of you guys talked about, which I, I'm really surprised. Yeah. Carolina minus five and a half. Absolute yeah, lock. lock. Shout out Big Vin. Yeah, that's Vin, true. You know that's absolute a lock. lock. <laughs> Carolina's mo- going to absolutely murder. Monkey Hill Community Jets. College versus the Jets. <laughs> lock. Lock. What, their baseball team? Bowdoin State College. <laughs> lock. Colby Sawyer. Lock. Yeah. Suffolk doesn't even have a football team. Lock. <laughs> But people are raving about Zach Wilson. They think he's going to change the narrative. They, Tony Romo actually said he's going to be the next guy. Yeah, and it's funny, Steve. Another, uh, I think CBS reporter said, out of all the QBs he's looked at, Wilson has had the best and smoothest transition to the NFL. I'm not saying, listen, I actually like the kid. I think this game's going to be close. I'll take Carolina with the spread. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but I, I don't. I don't think it's... I don't think it's going to be like a blowout. I think no. they'll lose by like 10. Yeah. If, yeah, 10 14. Unless Robert Sala is just off. He, he's we'll my see. problem. That yeah. dude is. You cannot have Mr. Clean on the sidelines screaming I, like he's Nick Saban on LSU. I just don't think from like what they were last year to what they will be this year that the locker room changed that much that's going to no, make yeah, them no. go from a, a five win football team to anything better than that. Yeah. That, I don't see any leaders in there. I like I praying I, for seven. Yeah, you know, like absolutely. And like they got some guys healthy and back and maybe they made some good picks, but we'll see. Another lock, the last lock of this episode. Tennessee Maybe. minus three. I got one more. Lock. I like that a lot. Tennessee minus that, that that's a lock. They're home versus Arizona. Arizona can't win on the road. They're no. not gonna go into Tennessee and stop Derrick Henry. Absolutely not. No, that's a good pick. That's a lock. That's a, at least uh nine nine win. We're forgetting one very important lock. Green Bay minus four and a half. That's I like that. Okay. I'll take that's that. an absolute lock. I mean, even if the Saints do give them a game, they're yeah. gonna win by at least a touchdown. It's yeah. a lock. Yeah. yeah. It's a good game. Lock. Lock it Shout in, out baby. Lockhead family. Absolutely. Okay. Lock. <laughs> All right, guys. Those are our six sandbox week one rankings. Make sure. Wait, those are on out. Those are the week one spreads. Make sure to go and listen to the week one rankings on the podcast, mm-hmm. which you must also leave a five star review. But we're it's hungry. Quiet. We got to go. See you later. Week one, baby. For all these great iron and hard top, it's Kevlu and Steve the sandbox. Ooh.